welcome back to the channel. Today I actually want to share with you guys some really important tips that will actually help you create better cinematic vlogs. We'll be touching on some things like my color settings, what picture profiles I use, as well as the lens choices, and how to actually film a cinematic scene. Today's episode is actually a pretty special one though because Sony is sponsoring today's video. I'm actually going to be filming with the Sony ZV-E10 alongside with three of Sony's new APS-C lenses that I'm really excited to share with you guys. You guys probably already know this by now, but I've been a massive fan of Sony for quite some time now and I've been using their gear since the beginning of this journey of making videos here on this channel. That's why I was really excited when Sony reached out to me and wanted to sponsor today's video. Honestly, I'm really impressed with the Sony ZV-E10. I really like how simplistic and easy it is to use. Not to mention how lightweight it is, especially for vlogging. I think that's really important. Yeah, definitely one of the best starter cameras on the market, I would say. Another really awesome feature on this camera is the defocus feature. If you hit the switch once, it will open up your aperture to the widest on your lens. And if you hit it again, it will close your aperture to where everything is in focus. I really like how they set it up to where any beginner could utilize this feature and not really have to know what aperture is and how to actually use it. The Sony ZV-E10 also does come with a built-in directional three capsule microphone, which does sound pretty good. However, if you do want even higher quality audio, the Sony ECM B10 is the perfect compact microphone to go along with your APS-C camera body. Personally, this is by far one of the best sounding shotgun microphones I've used, and I just really like how light and compact it is. I like it. Pretty lightweight, like I, I feel comfortable carrying this around. The buttons, they're not over complicated, you know, on and off button. That's all you need. <laughs> We're actually out here in Big Bear and uh, me and Shy rented out this really nice cabin. Uh, they actually locked the upstairs though, so we can't actually get up there, which is sort of a bummer. We got some antler vibes up there. Pretty Show us the bathroom. The bathroom, it's a little dark. Open it up a little. So look at this sink. Little Thanks. impractical because like you have to go like this, but you know it's a nice design. I, I see the I see the vision. <laughs> All right, so for the first tip that I recommend you guys should do is to actually change your picture profile from standard. Don't get me wrong, a standard is actually pretty great. However, if you wanted to get a little bit more dynamic range and a little bit more color control in your shots, then I definitely recommend changing your picture profile. And I personally like to film on HLG2. This is personally my preferred picture profile for filming on the ZV-E10. This allows me to actually get a little bit more of a flatter image, duller colors, and a little bit more dynamic range. So that way I can actually fix all that inside the post-processing and really have some control of my colors. And one of the main reasons why I prefer HLG2 is because it's actually a much easier picture profile to work with. There's no tricky exposing method like with S-Log2 and S-Log3. You just expose it as it is and you get a pretty nice image. And not to mention, it's also not as flat and dull versus like a S-Log picture profile. So it's actually pretty easy to color grade inside post. So if you go ahead and go inside your menu settings onto the eighth page on the first tab, you'll actually find picture profile. Go ahead and select that. And I've actually changed my PP1 into HLG2 and I've actually changed my color mode to 709. One more thing that changed was detail. I actually lowered uh, the sharpness level all the way to minus seven. I don't really like the in-body digital sharpness that they add inside the Sony cameras. So I definitely recommend you guys turn it all the way down and actually add the sharpness inside the post process. This is especially useful for the 1080p footage. I find that when I leave my detail on zero, it just, over sharpens the 1080p way too much and it sort of just looks kind of overdone. So by leaving it on minus seven, I can actually add how much sharpness I want. All right, so now moving into the next tip that I have for you guys, which is gonna be lens choices. Here I have three of Sony's new APS-C lenses that are perfect for vlogging and filming cinematic B-roll. The first one I have over here is a Sony 15 millimeter F 1.4 G lens, which is very tiny, very nice build quality with the aperture ring, custom button, autofocus, manual focus, switch, and a D-click switch. This would be about equivalent of a 24 millimeter F 1.4 focal length. And because of that F 1.4, we're gonna be able to get that super shallow depth of field and really nice background blur in all of our shots. Personally, I'm a big fan of this look and I think this really helps to make your shots look more cinematic. And not to mention having that F 1.4 is gonna help out with that low light performance. So in my opinion, you can't go wrong with this lens. Sony also released a ultra wide 10 to 20 F 4 G lens, and this would be equivalent 
cooled into somewhere around a 15 to 30 millimeter f4 focal length. Has a similar build that you would expect from a Sony G lens, custom button on the side, autofocus and manual focus switch. And because this is a zoom lens of a focal length of 10 to 20, this is gonna be a really good option if you wanted to have more variety in your shots since you'll be able to zoom in tight or maybe just zoom out for an ultra ride. And now the final lens and maybe my favorite lens out of these three is gonna be the 11 millimeter f1.8. This is a ultra wide lens with a focal length of somewhere around a 16 millimeter but with a fast aperture of f1.8. So that means we're still gonna be able to get that really nice background blur and shallow depth of field. This lens is perfect for vlogging and getting cinematic shots because of that ultra wide field of view and because of that fast aperture. All are really great options and not to mention they're super tiny and ultra light made perfect for your APS-C camera. And now moving on to my next tip and that is simply just by filming more B-roll. And if you're not familiar with what B-roll is, essentially B-roll is what you're gonna overlay while you're talking. So let's just say if I'm talking about the beach, uh, the beach is really nice, it has really blue waters, the sunset is gorgeous out there. And while I'm actually talking about something, I can actually overlay all these B-roll shots and make my video a lot more interesting. It's not gonna be just a talking headshot. There's gonna be a mix of cinematic shots as well as, you know, day-to-day -day life of vlogging. Trust me, getting more B-roll never hurts. It's always much more interesting to overlay all these other clips on top of the A-roll, which is, you know, me just talking to the camera. <music> So now moving on to the next tip, which is actually two features inside this camera that actually really helps me out with filming better cinematic footage. The first one that I definitely think you guys should be utilizing is the digital stabilization within this camera. So the sensor on this camera nor the lens is actually stabilized. However, they do have digital stabilization within the firmware and it actually makes it feel like your shots are as smooth as a gimbal while you're handheld. It's not perfect and you do get a 1.4x crop into your footage so there are some quirks when you do turn on digital stabilization. However, if you're going to be filming cinematic b-roll or if you're going to be doing a lot of vlogging where you're holding out the camera and you're walking and it's really shaky, I highly recommend you guys turn on the digital stabilization. It's not too bad of a crop to where it crops you completely out. As long as you have a pretty wide angle lens, you should be fine. And as for the second feature, that's going to be the S and Q mode. Basically what the S and Q mode is just going to be your slow motion mode. You can either film at 60 frames per second or at 120 frames per second, which is even slower. Personally, I like to film in 60 frames per second if I'm not going to be filming anything like super fast. And slow motion combined with the digital stabilization inside this camera, you can get really smooth shots. I was actually going handheld and getting a bunch of B-roll inside this house. And honestly, I was really surprised by just how smooth the digital stabilization made the footage. If only they had this on all the other cameras and if there wasn't like a 1.4x crop, I wouldn't even need my gimbal anymore. That's how crazy smooth the digital stabilization is. All right guys, so it is almost sunset. We're gonna head out to the lake over there and actually try to catch some good lighting, get some good shots. So now that I've shown you my picture profile, how to shoot in slow motion, the importance of turning on a stabilization on this camera, some lens choices, as well as how important it is to shoot B-roll, now I actually wanna show you guys how I actually film a cinematic sequence. What I keep an eye out for, what I like to do, and basically how I just kinda of find my shots. So that's what we're gonna be trying to tackle today. We're gonna to try to get some cool B-roll around here with this really nice lighting, and I'll kinda of just show you guys behind the scenes on uh, kinda of like what I look out for and like what I like to shoot. One of my secret weapons when I film cinematic b-roll is gonna be filming in slow motion. Slow motion just makes everything look so much more cinematic and even the smallest details like Shai just brushing against the flowers or her just flipping her hair looks actually really good. I also really love shooting directly at the sun during sunset. Backlighting is a really popular lighting technique used in all of your favorite movies. So don't be afraid to point your camera directly at the sun and especially don't be afraid to get some of those lens flares in there too. I think they make for a really awesome natural effect. All right guys, I'm watching back the slow motion footage right now and honestly guys, it blows me away just how smooth it is. This camera is so lightweight, but it literally shoots like a gimbal. Like guys, I'm not even kidding, but this clip literally looks like I have a gimbal with me. Dude, look at this. That yeah, looks that like looks a gimbal. Crazy. That looks pretty good. That 
That's just crazy, guys. That blows my mind, man. Honestly, I wish they had this in the A7S3 or the A7IV. That would make it a complete game changer. This is sick. This is cool. This is actually really cool. Alright, so there you have it guys. Those are some of the most important tips that I definitely think you should know for when it comes to creating a cinematic vlog. There's no more excuses now guys. I want to see you guys go out there and make your own cinematic vlog. If you guys are just starting out and you're looking for a new camera, then I highly recommend the Sony ZV-E10. I think it's a great beginner's camera alongside of with three of Sony's new APS-C lenses. If you guys have any questions, any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will do my best to try to get back to you guys. If you did enjoy this video, do not forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come find me on Instagram as well. I post a lot of reels and a bunch of other stuff that I think you guys will definitely like. Huge shout out to Sony once again for sponsoring today's video. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.